Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today is like a part two of my track walk. I just wanted to explain how I get my power to my track and uh, my jumpers and uh, all that fun stuff. So yeah, so let's get our safety goggles on and our fire extinguishers ready. I'm about to show you electricity stuff. Oof. All right, guys, welcome Trackside. Um, it is December. It is a couple days before Christmas. So I figured what better way to help out Jen than to come downstairs and just, you know, work on the track. And then I realized before I hide uh, any of these wires or any of this uh, power supply setup that I got going on here, uh, let me just do a quick video of, uh, yeah, you know, it's never gonna be quick. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> let's do a quick video of how I set up and what I did to power up my track. Yeah, so this power supply I got off Amazon. All the links of all the pieces and accessories I used will be um, in the description. I'll post links to that for sure. And these wires, with the exception of these wires, which are just standard, um, you know, cable wires that I got, I got off work. You can use pretty much anything. These are 18 gauge. And these wires here are your standard regular, you know, any computer uh, power plug will do. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so yeah, so let's uh, get to the power source right off the bat. Um, or the, where the power is coming from. It's coming from right now my um, surge protector, uh, which is plugged into the wall, which I have this connected right here. So this guy, excuse me, this guy here come, is just a standard computer uh, plug, computer power cable uh, into this little um, black box thingy, which I love. I like and chose because, you know, one, one of your standard things like that, guys, which I like because the fuse box was incorporated. I didn't feel like splicing this wire too many times. Uh, so I soldered all that and I put some electrical tape around it. And this, I actually had plans to put all of this in its own separate box uh, to have an actual power supply in its own separate unit. But I figured for now, uh, in case I do that, I'll have this uh, as an option. But until then, I'll just use it as a uh, connector for the plug. So let's plug that back in. All right, so plug back in. And yeah, so that's just, that's two. So what you'll need is two uh, standard computer power cables. Uh, I just use um, power cable, yeah, just computer cables, just so you guys understand what I mean. Uh, the gray one goes into here, plugs into the power supply, negative, positive, and ground. And then we have our negative and positive that come out. Uh, I believe I said it before, it's 24 volts, 15 amps. It's a little bit on the too much side, 24 volts meaning, you know, uh, we don't need more than 20 volts really for Carrera, maybe 20, 22, so 24, I knew I was safe. I knew I would never go up that high. I did choose the 15 amps only because I couldn't find the 10 amper. And I thought that at one point I would actually split up the power supply to give me different, to do two things at once. But I realized no, that's probably not a good idea. So it is now gonna be a dedicated power supply to this track. And it's connected to this module, uh, DP10, no, DP0515, I believe. Uh, it's just basically a module that it matches the, uh, the power outage for, for the power supply. Uh, not needing more than 15 amps or something like, something like that. I don't know. I'll, I'll post the, the name of it up in the corner. And once I powered it on, you'll see why I like this thing. It's got a lot of pretty lights and pretty colors, and I like fancy things. Um, it's in this jewel case only because while we're racing, I don't want to accidentally touch it or short anything out. So this this guy is going to be able to control the, the power going into the um, CU. So I'll be able to, you know, put the 12 volts for my analog cars, 18 volts for digital, and... 15 for 132, 18 volts for 124, 15 for 132, blah, 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 all that stuff. Uh, so that's why I did it that way. Is this something I would recommend to you? Absolutely not. Uh, this is, I went way overboard. I believe this thing cost me 60 bucks, which is, you know, $10 cheaper than a regular power supply that you can get. And that was 20. So right off the bat, you know, the budget has been broken. Uh, I just really liked this idea and I really wanted to incorporate this screen into uh, the top of my table here with that uh, on-off button. Oh, did I show you the on-off button? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. So after this guy, sorry, I wanted to not have to unplug it every time. So I installed a little on-off button here that just splices into the main wire. And again, that's why I wanted the fuse built into that thing. So I didn't have to splice this wire too many times and have too many, um, you know, uh, what's it called, uh, danger points or uh, points of failure uh, to worry about. So this is just your basic switch. Got fancy, ripped it out of a computer. So these could, you know, I didn't have to solder, which was nice. Those switches are there. 
And I'm just gonna install this somewhere here, somewhere flat on top next to the um, next to this guy here. Uh, if you guys are thinking about picking one up, this guy is all in Chinese. I managed to find the English instructions, but you would think that they would translate properly. They do not. Uh, just like the Franken slot controllers, I don't know if I have a hidden talent for figuring out menus or figuring out what, <laughs> what people are trying to say in English and writing. I don't know how I did it, but I managed to figure out uh, how to navigate through this menu. It's not that difficult if you've navigated through any menu before. But again, um, if any of you do decide to pick this up, by all means, give me a shout. I will help you navigate the menu and how to set this all up for you. It's not that uh, hard. Now, um, where, I, where was I at? Where was I at? I was at the plug. This is the on off. That's the control, that's the control unit, goes into the CU, and then what I did was uh, this wire right here, again 18 gauge, down into these connectors. So I split the connector that goes into the Carrera CU. We all know that it's got that fancy, funny little, ugh, this little Y guy here. I don't know if you want to call this, I mean, I'm sure there's a name for it somewhere. And uh, yeah, so we had to split that, put that back in there. And I didn't want to, hardwire this cable into here uh which i could have i mean i could have done that but i was just it was just easier to to plug this in so i can move this around to for other cus or have this you know be, be available for the actual uh, brick that i cut this off of um yeah i wanted to repurpose it and i'll show you guys that in a second these are tx60 um tx60 connectors uh those of you in the rc you know what i'm talking about um you've seen these before these are great little cheap and expensive connectors and they're solid and they're nice and i like them and they look pretty and i'm not really worried about this uh, ever breaking uh hopefully my soldering uh skills hold up but it should be fine that's how it is that's uh that is how it is that is this is not good english but anyways okay let's power it up and show you what i mean so we take this guy here no cars on the track no okay we're good this guy here Boom, powered up. Green light means go, so we have power in there. Let's look at our module. Oh, and it's turned on. Uh, there's a nice little startup screen there, but I guess it didn't, uh, <laughs> it was, we didn't have enough time to get to it. All right, so the red light at the bottom basically means it's off and you see zero. The green is voltage, yellow is amperage, and the purple is wattage. And yeah, that's it. So now nothing is on, but it is set to the 15 volts. So it is uh, automatically set to turn on to 15, so we can do digital 132, no problem. But now, if I wanted to do analog, I would just hold down the M2 here, and M2 shows up, boom, switches to 12 volts. So now it's set to 12 volts, but it's not on yet. So what I like about this unit is that M2, M1 are presets that I've um, programmed, and they're right on, right on the fly buttons. And the third preset would be to go back to the 15, which is pretty neat. And then if I wanted to go and hold hold M1, that brings me to 18 volts. So if I wanted to do a digital 124, it's uh, bringing me directly to 18 volts, which I like. And then if I actually wanted to put a, send this to the power unit, I just press on, boom, green light goes on, 18 volts. Now that's showing me what's active. And as the cars run around the track, the amps will, um, show me what's going on and show me how many amps is being pulled and I think that's really neat and that's why I want that there uh yeah so you can see that I can turn on the track it turns on this is my digital to analog um switcher by tech slot box so I would just hit that in digital and now the track is ooh, it's digital okay let's turn that off and let's turn that off and let's get back to here uh, another neat feature if I wanted to is I can go hold down the set button and then it brings me to the M0, and now I can scroll through my presets, M1, M2, excuse me, it's hard to do this one, on M3, and then I'll press the set, and that should go back, boom, back to 15 volts, and now I've got 15 volts going out to my power supply. Uh, normally you want to turn that off, uh, or at least turn off the CU, so you don't like jolt power to it. I mean, that's just a little safety thing, you can do what you want when you get yours, if you get yours, when you get yours. All right, so let's just turn this off. Anyways, I thought this was really neat. I think it's gonna look really nice plugged into the track like that and, you know, giving it a little, maybe I'll do an arc, maybe I'll do an angle thing. I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what my um, creativity-ness will uh, let me, allow me to do. The, uh, where you see set there, where it says 15 volts and then the number right next to it, that's the amps. Uh, I like it because there's a lot of safety features in here. I can set uh, internally what the maximum voltage can output can be, what the maximum average output can be, and what the maximum wattage can be. The wattage is not too, too important, uh, but setting the maximum amperage and the maximum voltage 
uh, as a safety, I think is a really neat feature um, that is, was on this thing. And it was just kind of like, oh, okay, cool. You know, I like safety as soon as I'm going to be plugging in and soldering a bunch of wires that I'm not really sure are the code. Uh, so uh, the, mo the more safety, the better. And that was one of the reasons why um, I chose this module as well. Everything is super customizable. If you just go into the menu, see the set, you've got all these fancy features here, uh, most of them being um, safety settings, the OCP, the OVP, that's the overpower over uh, something else. Like I said, uh, I was trying to decipher the Chinese to English uh, translation and I managed to figure out most of it. Um, yeah, so that, that's it. I mean, there's, that's it. This is the only menu there is. I mean, there's one more preset at the bottom, so don't get too overwhelmed. That's it. You got one more line off, but most of this is just safety settings. It, there's not. It's there's not much to it. All right. Let's uh, let's show you. So that's that. That's what I did. Let's show you how I repurposed the uh, car power supply to um, be a motor break-in power supply thingy. Uh, okay. Let's get to the table. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Before we get to the table, <laughs> silly me. Uh, let me explain my jumper cable. So in the last video, I explained that I jumped it uh, three in three places. And I used basic speaker wire, guys. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy, just regular speaker wire. Uh, all the negatives, positives. You know, mark your mark your tracks accordingly, so you don't uh, so you don't lose anything. You don't lose your your spot. It happened to me. Uh, I reversed them in here, and then it took me a while. And you and you really want to test it with a voltmeter to make sure before you turn anything on. And that's it. But I went a little again fancy with this. Um, <laughs> don't don't freak out. These are Phoenix, um, the Phoenix, Phoenix Technologies, Phoenix. I forget. I'll, I'll post it in the, I'll post it in the in the in the video description. Uh, I'm missing a plate here. That's why there's um, a piece of plastic. But I end up using these terminal blocks with these red jumpers here. So basically, power comes in uh, negative on the bottom side. So this is negative, this is negative, and positive on the top. One is for the left track, and one is for the right track. And I just basically did this did, did this that way and got a little din rail that I'm going to cut and I'm going to easily screw underneath the table. It's a complete mess now, but I'll, I promise I'll, I'll clean it up. You don't care what's under my table. It doesn't matter. I don't have to promise anything. Uh, you can use regular breakout boxes, those the, the little black screw ones that everyone's using. You don't have to do this. I'm just a guy who likes to go completely overboard and this was just easier and I just, you know, plug and play. Didn't have to like solder anything or cut anything. Just, you know, scaff these wires in the terminal blocks and that's it. I could have went with the simpler ones, the ones that didn't have the negative positive, the ones that were just um, two terminals and put some jumpers in there. I just, I don't know why I did the uh, the four block uh, system. You can buy the, the smaller ones if you want. I just find it's neater, cleaner and underneath the table. I just, this is what I work with every day at work. So yeah, I know, overboard. I know, I know. All right, guys, uh, this is the leftover <laughs> so the leftover Carrera power supply, the 132, I mean, it's not really leftover. It's just, you know, we cut it here and I decided to repurpose it to make sure I could reuse it. If ever my power supply goes down, I have the original uh, power supply, uh, you know, as a backup to keep me running. And also, uh, if ever I wanted to um, use another track, I wouldn't have to buy another power supply, especially for 132. Um, and seeing as I'm doing the GRL this year, I'm going to need a portable power supply. And yeah, this just fits the bill. Now, another thing uh, that I'm using this, uh, another way I'm using this power supply is to break in my motors. I finally started breaking in my motors at home and I got this fancy little module here, another fancy module. This is actually less fancy. This is something that um, my buddy had on his desk and I looked at it and I said, well, not this specific one, but we kind of worked on this one together. And I said, hey, listen, that looks really cool. Could you build me something or could we put together something that could uh, break in a motor with a voltage regulator and have an amp reading. And he's like, yeah, for sure. And we came up with this little this little guy. These are all parts that are easily uh, accessible and you can probably build one yourself. Um, and I just got it here. It's kind of like a prototype because there's still a few kinks that I have to figure out, which I'll show you now. But other than that, it works It works pretty well for, for what it is. Um, plug it in, there you go. It's at maximum here. It's showing 14.9, which is the maximum the uh, Carrera 132 will uh, give out. That's voltage. At the bottom is amperage. And you know, here if we scroll it down, it goes all the way down to one. So you can have one amp, 1.3 amps, all the way up to 14.9, which is pretty neat. I made a little um, extra connector here with the Carrera um, pin. I mean, it's not a Carrera pin. I think this is, um, I don't remember what the name of this pin is. I forget. Uh, I'll post it up in the corner or something. I forget. But this is the pin that uh, clips into the motors. And uh, I have also a 
some alligator clips here that also clip into the side. So basically what I do is I plug this guy in here <clears throat> and then with the alligator clips I clip the uh, motor and then the motor will just turn and run and then you can just you know, break in your motor with at whatever voltage or whatever uh, method you use. I use a 369 method. Uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, yeah, that's what this is for. I know I should be plugging this in, but what I did was because I wasn't looking at the right connector, this is a female connector and I need a male connector that fits into this module. Uh, so that's why I'm not doing it that way, but, uh, that's why I didn't show you that way just cause I'm, I'm I was really silly and I, I did the wrong connector, but anyways, no big deal. I'll just go back to uh, my soldering station and fix that for the new year. But yeah, so we can, um, I'll plug this into the motor, break in the motor. No big deal. Uh, what I like about this module is that it has a uh, short um, short protector so this red light will go on uh, if there's a short and there's a yellow light here that actually indicates when there is arcing uh, which is interesting um, it's not really indicating when it's arcing it's actually the module itself is meant to let you know when the battery is full but for some reason i noticed when i had a few um, uh, motors that were arcing and sparking this light was going off so uh, i have to just dive in a little bit and see if i can't um, fine tune it to actually have it indicate something or just be like, no, no, that's just, you know, that was just coincidence. Uh, I, like I said, I'm still figuring this, this little gadget out, but for right now it does what I, uh, it does what I uh, want it to do. And that's break in motors at various, uh, voltage. Um, the one thing I don't like, or one thing I think I have to do is get a more precise reader because at low voltage, uh, I can't see how many amps are coming in. I think the decimal place is too, um, is too close. I have to put it at another two decimal places because uh, at higher voltage, it's fine, but the amperage doesn't move. So it doesn't vary. Uh, like if you guys have, uh, if anybody has any one of those regular power supplies, you'll see a more precise amperage reading and this doesn't do that. So I don't know if that's just something that I'm gonna have to live with or uh, I'm gonna have to see how much more it's gonna cost to upgrade the module. But anyways, that's that's neither here nor there. That's just something that I'm using. I just want to share that. Uh, I'm trying to come up with something that could be possibly affordable. Uh, if anybody was interested, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to keep this under 40 bucks, but this is not a, a sales pitch whatsoever. Uh, I just gotta make sure this thing works for now. You can easily build one of these uh, yourself. There's plenty of plans online. You don't need to hear me talk about it too much. Uh, and that's it. And that's how I repurposed the 132. I got this little module to break in my motors. It's a backup for uh, in case the, my power supply breaks. And I'm going to be using it to move around uh, to be portable if ever I needed to build a track like the GRL. Uh, that's, that's it, guys. Look, it's a couple days till Christmas. Merry Christmas. All the best. Like and subscribe if you like this video. And I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone's having a great time and happy racing. All the best. And we will see you in the next one. All right. So as you guys can see here, 14.9 uh, is the maximum voltage uh, that the uh, power supply is putting out. This is a 27 um, maximum pot. That's why there's some some um, distance here. It won't give the, the full the full range. But if you bring it down, what, what are you giving me this for? I heard you say the word electricity. What? Just be safe, please. Are you serious right now? Just be safe. I'm filming. Just be safe. Are you serious right now? Just be safe. Oh, come on. I love my house. Oh, my goodness. Okay, safety first, always. Oh, my gosh.